Hello. Hi, everyone. I actually don't know. I usually am on the Facebook, so I know who's there and who's talking, but today I don't, but it's okay. Um, so, yeah, I will be talking about social listening today. And without further ado, I'm going to share my screen and start streaming. So, yeah, um, I will leave time for questions in the end, but of course, feel free to do leave your questions and comment as we go. So social listening, what we will cover today is uh, what is social listening from a, a strategy point, uh, what are the tactics or actions that you can take, what are the metrics that you would use to measure and monitor, as well as the ethical and legal implications that were introduced um, to protect users online. Uh, some of the tools that I have personally used or uh, researched and find them um, very useful. And in the end, the tips and tricks. So, uh, from a strategy point or strategic listening is actually a proactive uh, form of listening where you decide to go and do um, type of listening uh, for a product or a brand or a category or a keyword. Um, so we call it proactive because, and it is listening, which is different from monitoring, which is a reactive uh, type of uh, action. So on your uh, Facebook page, for example, if you're monitoring what's happening there and once you take action, this is a reactive. However, listening is a proactive where you go for different platforms and not necessarily you have an existence. So strategic listening then uh, can be split into two parts, an active and a passive listening. An active listening is where you plan to actually take actions based on the insights or the findings that you find. A passive listening is that you do not plan on taking actions and you're merely just listening and mod monitoring maybe your um, your uh, social media uh, uh, presence or a competitor or maybe a um, maybe uh, some elections uh, so basically you're listening and you're not planning to take actions uh, afterwards uh, and the tactics so this is when you decide to be active and this is when it becomes uh, a tactical listening. And in a tactical listening, some of the uh, actions that you plan to take could be to engage actively with the people talking. So um, it could be, again, on your uh, social media accounts and platforms. Um, however, in some cases, it can also be to actively engage and talk and have conversations with people uh, talking on uh, open platforms such as uh, Facebook, um, public Facebook groups, uh, public Facebook uh, accounts, uh, Instagram accounts that are not private. Twitter is very famous in that sort. The second form of action that you can take is respond to those who expect an answer. And this is mainly for businesses that find that there are mentions for their brands. So those people are talking directly about your brand or maybe talking directly to you, but prior to having uh, a social media account, you couldn't, you couldn't respond to them. Um, the third part, and why is this important? Because there are some listening uh, plans or projects that are done, and unfortunately, you cannot neither engage nor respond uh, with a clear answer, or is not you don't have the authority to actually provide an answer. And one example of this is that in the pharmaceutical um, industry 
or health industries when you're not able to give an actual advice. So, for example, uh, mental health is a very popular topic these days. And um, there are many platforms or companies that are entering the market and they are engaging with those people. However, they have to be very careful not to give any uh, advice that is concerning to health. So what they do is mostly direct people to credible sources. And uh, so moving on to the ethical and legal implications. Um, I guess we all know about the GDPR that was introduced in 2018, which put lots of constraints on how you process the personal data that comes to you or when you search for personal data. And the principles are lawfulness, fairness, uh, accuracy, storage information, and so. And also um, the type of processing is if you want to store them, use them for uh, remarketing, retargeting. So there are different types of processing and these are the principles that you should apply to your processing. Um, and then we have, um, so just to, make it, to break it down and make it easier, whenever you go to a website these days, you are prompt out with a message saying to give a consent whether this company or this website can use your information. Um, and in most cases, we, we click yes to all. And in some cases, some people do update the preferences. And what you're doing here is when you decide not to give them any consent, it means that these websites cannot retarget you. Uh, they cannot track your uh, cookie to see what websites you are uh, visiting. And in some cases, when you give consent, then they can do the following. Um, and hence, you start seeing advertisement, uh, advertisement from them or relevant to them in not necessarily on the same platform, but even in different platforms and sometimes applications. Anyway, so in the, in the passive listening, when you do not plan to take any action, you do not need uh, a consent. So legally, you do not need people's consent when you are doing a listening without planning to take any action. However, if you are in the act of listening and you plan to take an action later, then this is where you need to make sure that people who you will be using their information in those uh, processing uh, types or principles need to give you a consent, hence the um, approve on the website. Moving forward, so also I wanted to highlight different types of uh, socials and um, very easily we have open social, closed social and dark social. The open social is what we actually have access to and uh, for example a Facebook page or a Twitter public account and uh, a public page on LinkedIn. However, I do want to point out here that LinkedIn do have some sort of closed features. Hence, um, if you are doing a social listening, you cannot access all the information you need from LinkedIn. And in most cases, you will need to contact LinkedIn directly um, to get permission to store or uh, access some information. And the closed social, so this is when in your website and you put a sharing button. And when people share uh, this blog or page or URL through these buttons, you can track this, but not further. You can see where it went. So people click to share on email or people click to share on the website, but you cannot, uh, you cannot track it further than that because it's closed. You cannot see information that is being shared on an email or how it is being shared, unlike the open. And the last one, which is dark. So dark social is actually when people can when people copy a link, paste it uh, in a closed uh, social, like an email or WhatsApp. And uh, funny enough, the dark social actually has the highest penetration of sharing among those three. 
So whatever you see on the open social is actually a very small percentage of what is happening in the social media sphere. And it's still able to help us make decisions. However, keep in mind that there is a huge word uh, behind dark social that we have no idea about. Um, I just wanted to point out here about the API and what it actually means. So the API allows the integration. So for example, when we have tools that we will discuss later, these tools uh, on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and in open social, the APIs allows the integration between those tools and those platforms so the listening and analytics can happen. Uh, in a closed social, those APIs don't allow integration and the dark social, it's completely invisible for analytics. So the tools, uh, these are some of the most famous, but they are not the only ones. There's actually a large list of tools that are available for listening. However, um, most of these tools are what I've used for small, medium, and actually large businesses. And I decided that I want to uh, break them down by minimal fees. So these are suitable for small to medium businesses or growing businesses. And the larger fees one are available or more suitable for enterprises and more advanced social listening. So Hootsuite, we all know it. And the reason I put Hootsuite first, because I think it's one of the uh, oldest, most known social media platform that is actually 360. And what I like it, why I like it is because you can do the planning, the publishing, the moderation, and actually the listening. So it's, it is very, um, I would say, rounded. Uh, Awario, I haven't used it, but I've uh, been through the demo and it's actually very user friendly and very the, the interface is, is very easy. Uh, Sprout Social and Social Bakers, Meltwater and Talkwalker are for larger enterprises. Um, Sprout Social, you can do uh, planning, publishing and listening. Uh, Social Bakers, and the reason it's one of the it has a bigger budget to start. It's also a really good uh, platform where they have many products. And one of them that I've used previously is that they have one that actually studies influencers, search for influencers, and categorize influencers. Another thing they do, and even if you don't plan to buy in the this platform, um, I really encourage you to go visit it because they uh, publish reports almost a monthly basis for different categories, for top brands, for industries, uh, different countries, and uh, it's really it's really in insightful. Meltwater and Talkwalker is also really advanced. I've used Meltwater and uh, they do not disclose prices uh, because I guess it's very expensive and because they quote you uh, privately based on your needs, which can be encouraging for a lot of businesses. The metrics, so very straightforward. When you are doing a social listening and you want to study, you want to look at volume, but you also want to look at certain percentages and you want to look from a pie, what is your share of voice compared to other brands? And the last one, which is the sentiment analysis. So measuring your, uh, measuring the volume is to actually see if, for example, a product or a keyword is worth measuring. So a volume is a good way to start. But then um, you want to see the engagement trade that happens on certain places, whether it was, it was uh, replies or mostly mentions or mostly retweets and so on. Uh, the share of voice is very helpful for positioning and um, in the description when I was presenting or thinking about social listening, I mentioned that it will help you with your strategy or it would help you with a, uh, for example, a market entry research. So a share of voice is a good way to start because it tells you about your positioning. 
or if you don't have a positioning yet, it will help you know who you, who you will be competing or entering market with. And the last one is the sentiment analysis. And this is an AI machine learning. Basically what it does, it reads words and it classifies them whether it's a positive or a negative. Um, I will talk about this again later because sentiment analysis, even though it's a very smart and AI advanced, but human touch is still very much needed. Okay, so the last thing I will be covering today, uh, or before the last thing, is the tips and tricks. What should you do and what you shouldn't do? And I have to mention here that there is still a lot that you can do with social listening, and there are a lot of things you, should, you shouldn't do with uh, social listening. However, I'm covering here mostly the uh, uh, top, uh, top line or headlines of uh, the things. So the first thing you should do is clear really. You should have a plan. A plan on when do you plan to do listening? Why do you plan to do the listening? And this is your purpose. And what is the goal of doing listening? And here we covered the first three. So when you have a plan is is, um, is it for a campaign or a project? Is it for a product? Is it for uh, maybe a new brand or an existing brand? And then once you know why, when, or for what reason you are doing the monitoring, you go and specify a purpose. So here, uh, think about it. If you are launching a campaign, your purpose from that campaign is to if, if it's a, around a certain uh, hashtag, is to monitor the progress of this hashtag, how it's going viral or not going viral, how is it spreading or not spreading, where is it spreading to. So have a progress uh, sheet in front of you. Um, the third one, which is the goal and why is it important. In some cases, you, for example, if your goal is to see what customers are saying about you and what kind of feedback you are seeing. <clears throat> so if you find that the customer feedback is mostly negative, you should have a, a measurable specific goal to say that I want from this campaign or listening or project listening is to lower my complaints from 20% to 10% or to increase my uh, positive customer feedback from 50% to 60%. So it has to be scalable and me measurable, and it's a really good way to know where you're going. Uh, diversifying keywords. So, uh, and what I would like to mention here is that think of it that way. There are different ways that people write the word Starbucks, for example. And um, the, the younger the generation, the more keywords you will find because these days I find that younger people, not millennials, we're still really good with words or some of us are really good with words, but younger generations write words completely different. So make sure that you know how um, how your the words you're looking for the keywords you want to uh, do a listening for are spelled differently and sometimes even misspelled and they spread and the, everyone is using them in a the wrong way then uh it also helps so as i said this is good for um market entry and uh um also uh, putting strategy forward or predicting trends and this is a tip here to predict trends um and what what it's it's helpful when you're doing it timely so if you're listening on on a like all year round and you see that there is a peak in in a certain word from influencers this is more likely to become a trend um, so if you're listening in a timely manner yes you can predict trends moving forward however if you're listening or doing listening for 
old uh, or like past, then you're not really predicting trends. However, you are, you can you can study trends. Um, you maybe be able to predict trends if you find that in the past couple of years or certain months of years, this there is a peak in a product or a mention or uh, for a category like cold showers or swimsuits. Uh, there you will find sometimes peak in summer, a very good indicator that this is when you probably can do a campaign about swimwear. Um, and also, so after that, uh, what listening can help you is actually have insights on content. So if you find that you always cover a type of content, but when you go and do listening, you find that your competitors or actually people are talking in a completely different direction and so it could really inspire your content it could really elevate your brand if you do your listening correctly and it could really inspire you or give you creative ideas for campaign planning the last point is a share of voice so as i said um, a long share of voice what you can do is study the same metrics that you studied for yourself, studying them on competitors. And this is either to elevate your brand or to do differently or to do better, uh, or maybe to see that you are in the lead. So it's a really good positioning indicator. What you shouldn't do, don't use long tail keywords. So um, a lot of times we, we found that clients mistaken between a keywords and long keywords use that we use for retargeting and remarketing. Um, and in remarketing and retargeting, long tail keywords are very helpful. In listening, it's not because once you make the keywords longer, then you are limiting your findings. This is the easiest I can explain it. Uh, what you shouldn't do if you're practicing uh, active listening and you plan to take action is do not be salesy. You're not going there to sell. You are going there to engage with, with conversations. You are going there to engage um, with uh, your customers and show them that you are there. The third one is do not trust AI powered sentiment analysis. So yes, um, the tools can show you kind of a, a good indicator of what is happening. Is it really positive? Is it really negative or is it balanced? However, and this is very uh, relevant to uh, difference in languages or how your tone of voice is. So for example, if I see something troubling and I say, this is sick, the AI machine will consider it as a negative sentiment. And it's correct. However, if I am younger again, and I say, this is sick, and it's a positive one, we know it, but what, when the AI machine uh, picks it up, they classify it as negative as well, but that's not the case. So that's why human intervention is actually important here. And what we used to do, and you can go on those actually tools and change it from negative to positive. So that's good. Uh, don't be tricked with numbers of interactions. So even though, as we said, volume is good, but in a lot of times when there is a lot of hype around something, um, do investigate it further and see if you can find out that there is a like for like, follow for follow, or bots being involved. So um, that's good. And don't just look, act. And uh, very straightforward. If you are doing listening, yes, you can be passive. However, I do encourage that if you are going to do listening and spend time and effort and money, um, do you plan on taking some sort of action? If it's not engaging, it can be planning, it can be um, maybe um, even producing reports in your industry that could be really insightful and put you in a thought leader position. So yeah, don't just look act. So that's it. I have just one last thing to show. 
which is an actual a, uh, interface or a dashboard of a social listening to. So this one is called Awario. And uh, basically, just quickly, I will show you something. So this is a short period that they're listening to, but imagine if this is long on a, on a different years and you see peaks in this month and this month. So this is a good way to, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to close this. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, so this is what's happening. So you can predict trends by seeing peaks on certain months. You can see um, basically if it's the majority negative or positive or neutral. Um, if you are doing a market uh, entry research, reach is a good indicator. Uh, the same thing for countries to see where people are talking about those topics or those keywords. Again, this is good for uh, market entry research or where you should um, direct your efforts. Um, the last two are also important. So yes, maybe um, in the UK, all what we care about is, talk, is mostly English. However, if you are planning on going beyond borders, um, and you see that there is a potential or a really good uh, percentage of audience speaking in another language that might be an indicator for you to maybe diversify your language. And the last one, which is the most important one, if one you have, uh, so in scenario one, you have accounts on all social media platforms and you see that when you're doing this uh, listening project, that most of the conversation is happening on Twitter. One thing you can do here is pull back a little from the rest of the social media platforms and put your efforts in Twitter. The, uh, the second scenario is that if you still don't have any social media presence and you plan to do a strategy and where you should be, I think this is a very good indicator that your first or top platform will be Twitter and then it will be news and blogs maybe to create newsletters or um, articles. And uh, yeah, so that's it. I think this is a really nice dashboard, actually, a Wario. And one thing you should know is that actually most of the tools these days are similar. You can use them in a similar way. You do not need to know everything. So it's better to outsource sometimes because it can be um, very tricky. Because what I talked about now is you as a brand owner and business owner what you can what you should know about however to perform the listening to perform the keywords and all that can be really tricky especially if you're talking big data so don't be afraid to outsource it and hopefully it will help you with your business so that's it thank you so much and uh, to you Lenka if anyone has questions Yes, thank you. This was amazing. We've got some great comments from Mirai, who says it's quite insightful. Berenice said this is very useful. It's an area I don't know much about. So some great feedback. And we've got a question from Danielle, who's asking, are there any free social listening tools? There is one which is called Some All. However, it's not for most of the social media platforms. So do look it up. Um, and also, if you have Hootsuite, uh, there are some uh, free features in it. But when you're doing a social listening a project, it's more advised and recommended to actually maybe invest a little. So you don't need to be paying for the whole year. Uh, maybe uh, buy the plan for a few months of the year to do your social listening project maybe uh, very insightfully because again, those platforms are monetized for a reason. And, the less you invest in, in them, the less information and insights you will be able to pull from them. I would say um, to start with, there are a couple of options for you, Danielle, that where you can start. You can start a simple with Google Alert, which is a free on Google. And you can yeah, yeah, yeah. 
if you've done the research and you have certain keywords, then you can see the colors for that. Um, I would say that if you're doing some proactive when you're actively searching and you know the keywords, then Twitter advanced search or a different platform that help you to search via hashtags would be a great yeah. way to start with social listening. Um, if you know that your audience will be on Reddit, then again, it's potentially a very interesting platform for you to be proactively listening by typing questions or typing a certain keywords for you to see the results. So um, I would add these kind of very low key, very basic. Yeah. They're not really classified as social listening tools, but they're kind of list, they're tools that you would usually use for different purposes, but they could be used for social listening as well. I had a question when you were talking about the ethical and legal implications, and it's more from the perspective of me as a user, because you mentioned that not everyone reads the terms and conditions and everything. Would you have any advice in terms of what to look for when we want to check how safe we're being on the internet, how protected we're being, what companies, approvals and uh, access we've given? Are there any places where we can go or any areas of private information we should really make sure that we're protected? Okay, so in terms of cookies, uh, this is kind of a safe area to allow companies to take because it's to track mainly your, your activity online and it can also be used for marketing and uh, retargeting purposes. So if you're concerned about that, maybe don't allow your cookies to be tracked. One thing you can do is constantly refresh or delete your uh, uh, clear history and cache and cookies so you can refresh that so you can always make sure that you are not being targeted but the very sensitive information that companies should not actually be included even if they include them they shouldn't and it's your private information such as your email uh, maybe your name uh, your your address um, uh, so all the kind of sensitive information they should not be tracked, they should not be stored, and they should not be used. And actually, um, interestingly, this week I had a call from uh, one, uh, one a company I worked with, and they were asking me like, oh, we would like to really encourage our clients or people we known before we had their information from a different client for retargeting and can we write to them can we use their emails and write to them that we would like to provide them with this service i was like no if these people don't know you they don't know that you have their email and they did not give you the consent to be talking to them, even though you're addressing them in a very professional way, you do not have the right to actually use the emails to write to them. So yeah, anything that is sensitive private information should not be stored or used without a consent. And anything that is public, such as a cookie and API, if you are concerned about it, then clearing your history and uh, cookies is a, is a good solution for it. Fantastic, thank you so much. If you have any questions, be it about social listening, in terms of social media, marketing, community management in general, let us know in the comments. Uh, Simon actually replied to Daniel's question about free reporting tools, free social listening tools, and she mentioned that Google Trends is uh, another alternative and that she's been using Brandwatch, which is a fantastic tool, but it is fairly big and very expensive. So only if you can, if you know someone who owns a bigger agency and they have prescription and you can ask them to get access to it, that might be a way. Um, but yes, other than that, um, these tools like Brandwatch are absolutely fantastic, but they are not, yeah. cheap and they are not uh, designed for small businesses. So we'll have to find different ways. Um, yeah, I just want to point out here the difference between a tool that is for social listening and Google Trends. So yes, Google Trends or following a certain hashtag or you doing the actual work 
is a good start and yes it's free the difference is that a social listening tool will will process a big data will be able to put it for you in a dashboard for you to actually make insightful uh, decisions and moving forward however when you're performing a google trend because i use google trends a lot actually it really helps me with content it really helps me when um, planning a campaign and um, this is a pitch for example or a proposal you don't want to invest in a tool google trends is a good start to see uh, trends and peaks on a certain month or places and cities. So it's yes, it's very good, but the social listening tool is more advanced in terms of the uh, processing of data and you can put in the information or the questions that you're actually really interested in instead of doing the, all the work by yourself manually. So that's just the difference. That's a really good perspective and point to make. Um, if we don't have any more questions, because I know that this is a very fairly complex and that's a heavier topic than usual. And even for myself, it will probably take me a while to process and I will have a question tomorrow and be like, now I have a question, please. So if you have any questions, feel free to, again, leave us a comment, drop us a message or reach out directly to Dana. And I know that she's been doing some amazing things with her free time right now. So do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, so um, so apart from apart from my freelance, I am a, a tutor on a website or a platform called Tutorful, which is really awesome. It's an online uh, platform where I give tutoring. I'm currently uh, teaching mostly Arabic, but uh, some one of my subjects is social media. So if you're interested in one-on-one, -on -one, uh, maybe. Uh, uh, sessions or uh, learning about uh, certain topics in social media this is also one thing you can do or if you are able to even tutor maybe check it out and you can be a tutor yourself 